Uh, if you came here because you heard that there was information about the labs, then go ahead and skip to whatever I put down in the to whatever time stamp I put down in the video description. Otherwise, you're gonna hear me ramble for a bit while I clean up this mess. And in the meantime, you probably have a few questions mainly regarding why. Well, I'm bored. I'm bored and have really nothing better to do. This is going to start probably with lab 4, including all the information that you need to know about the equipment, as well as just the theory. Some things that should have been covered to some extent in class, but weren't for a reason or another. And some general information about how to use some equipment, ranging from... Uh, what did I do with that? <laughs> ranging from a power supply and what all of these things mean how to use a multimeter as well as why you might want two of them I don't think the class is going to cover any soldering so I'm going to leave that out Probably how to use one of these bad boys, but again, I don't know if that's going to be covered in the class, scope of the class. I'm probably not even going to get to this thing, this video, since uh, I might just do lab 4 and 5. Lab 4 going over some of the things that people struggle the most, being just actually how to use the damn thing. And, oh yeah, breadboards. I'm also probably going to be munching on Triscuits, which you can just go ahead and mute the mic if you don't want to listen to me, or you can suck it up, because I am hungry. Let's start with lab four. construct a circuit that looks roughly like this. That is going to be your positive side, this is going to be R1. And I don't know at the moment what the value for R1 is going to be. Doesn't really matter. circuit here, yes it does have this, this is functionally the same as that for this particular scenario so I'm just going to leave it out, completely ignore it. Now, current in this, I'm going to use blue for current. This is your positive terminal, so given that your current goes from positive to negative, it's going to flow in this direction. This is where I is going to go. What do you need to do if you need to measure I? Well, first off, you need a device called an ammeter. That's the way I'm going to draw an ammeter with an A in a circle. An ammeter measures current. What many people, what I saw many people doing in the lab was trying to hook up the ammeter across this. How is the ammeter going to measure current if the current is not passing through it? Look at this. The current I in blue is still going through here. It's not going... Why would it go all the way through here and all the way through here? Well, 
in reality when you do that you are shorting it and it causes a bit of an issue but regardless you aren't measuring the current going through the resistor what you're measuring is the current going through the ammeter and ammeters tend to have a very low resistance this is effectively the same thing as having something along these lines let's call this R2 which is a very low value resistor ammeters will be in the order of milliohms so what you gotta get is a bunch of current flowing through here we don't want that we want all the current that is going through R1 to go through damn it to go through our ammeter now how do we do that? Well, we take a step back and we actually see what we do given that the condition for an ammeter to read accurately is for the current that we are trying to measure to pass through the ammeter we need to put it in the path of I. Now, just like in real life, if something isn't immediately, in, if something is in your path, but you can just walk around it, is it really in your path? The same holds true for here. That's an A, by the way, that's the ammeter. No current can go through R1 that does not pass for the ammeter. The same would happen over if I were to plug it over here. No current will flow through R1 or this ammeter up here without flowing through the second ammeter. The circuit needs to be broken in order to insert the ammeter first. Now, what are we looking at here? We're looking at, let me draw that again. And yes, I know that they draw it like a squiggly line. I'm not going to bother. When you see a box like that, to me that means a resistor or a load. In that case, this is, let's call this R, let's label our stuff. Build the circuit. Okay, so we have this part of it. So if we get some light on that. Let's start off with the theory. So, this is our voltage here. It's going to be written as E. So, when we work it down, thing here to remember one two three four is Ohm's law triangle voltage Resistance, current. Voltage, resistance, current. Current, in this case, we're always going to represent as a capital Y. R is always, re uh, resistance is always represented as R. V can sometimes be represented as E. 
when it's uh, written in a circuit or V for voltage. Again, we are now talking about units. The units of each, respectively, are V for volts, ohms for resistance, and amps for currents. And of course, these do experience the same multipliers, the engineering multipliers that <coughs> sorry, that all other units do. So let's say they have a thousand volts. That is equal to one kilovolt. Say that you have a uh, thirty-three thousand ohms. That is equal to thirty-three kilo ohms. Let's say they have zero point zero zero five two amps. That is equal to five point two milliamps. You bring this down one two three. Milli is 10 to the negative 3. K, or kilo, is 10 to the 3. So, you have a decimal point here. You bring it 1, 2, 3. You have now 33 kilo. If kilo is positive, for kilo you add 3 zeros. For milli, you subtract 3 zeros. Or you jump the decimal place 3 times to the right. For kilo, you go to the left. Now, back to what I was doing. The importance of this little thing over here is V is equal to R times I. And most of the time you're going to know at least two of these. And if you know two of them and you have a three variable equation, you can do some very simple algebra and figure it out. Let's say you need to find R, but you have a current and you have a voltage. Simply bring this over here. Divide V by I is equal to R. The same is true if you want to find uh, current. So you have a voltage, you have a resistance, and you have a current. Your current is going to be determined algebraically. This is going to be your volts. This is going to be your I theoretical. That's a theoretical. This is going to be your I measured. And this one over here is going to be your percentage deviation. The equation to calculate this one over here was in the lab. That one is a matter of just, you should have read. And I'm probably not going to do them all, but the general idea applies. So let's say that your voltage is zero. And for table 4.1 of lab 4, we are using a 1k ohm. So this one over here is R equals 1,000 ohms or R is equal to 1 kilo ohm. If you remember this over here or this over here for 0, what is our current going to be? We know our resistance, we know our voltage, the only thing we need to know is our current. So, I'm going to move these elsewhere. We know that voltage is equal to R times, let's just keep this a V to be consistent. We know that voltage is equal to V times, I'm sorry, to R times I. We know our voltage. We know we're trying to find our I. So we bring the R over, V divided by R is equal to We know our voltage to be zero. No matter what our resistance is, I is going to be zero. So our I theory is going to be zero. Now let's bring that up to two volts. Let's say that we use two volts. 
2 volts. Our voltage is now 2 volts. We are dividing by 1 kilo ohm. That is going to equal 2 divided by 1000. Zero. I think. Zero point zero zero two amps. Now, if you remember your engineering notation, one, two, three, that's milli, two milliamps. Always handle those there because this can also be represented as 0.02 volts over ohms they didn't cancel out we just know that whenever we see a volt over an ohm that is an amp so in this case is 2 milliamps 2 volts 0 volts 0 volts we're doing 2 milliamps and then I'm gonna go over how to work a power supply but in the meantime all right let's now do 6 volts has anything changed what has changed the only thing that has changed is our voltage our resistance is still the same so 2V over 1K ohms is equal to, I should have done it on the camera, uh, alright, 2 divided by 1000 is equal to, I'm sorry, 6 divided by thousand is equal to zero point zero zero six volts per ohm. What is a volt per ohm? I don't know why I'm pulling a door right here. You guys aren't answering. Anyway, that is six milliamps. Let's do the let's do the ten ten volts. So again, simple ten volts. We use this equation, which is the same as that equation over there, just uh, algebraically modified if you would say so, over 1,000 ohms. And every time I write this, I'm going to write it slightly differently. It's equal to 10 divided by 1,000. 10 one-thousandths. So, 0 0.010. This is the tenths, this is the hundredths, and this is the thousandths place. So, and this is a volt ohm, which is also equal to 0 0.010 amperes, or 10 milliamps. Because this is 10 to the negative 3 that milli. So effectively this is equal to 10 times 10 to the negative 3 amps. Same thing. And this over here is 10 milliamps.
now for our measured values. I need to first find a 1k resistor and I That is brown, 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 black, red, and then gold. That makes this a 5% 1k resistor. Uh, Red boards are a really cool thing. Now, Well, this one in particular has a solid blue, a solid blue line, and a solid red line. These are known as buses. Anything that you connect to this blue, and it says A right there, probably not in focus, but whatever. Anything you connect to that is going to be connected all the way through the line. Anything that you connect to B over here on the red side is going to be connected all the way through. So this point over here, where my knife is, or the tip of my knife is currently, is going to be connected to this one. This one over here is going to be connected to that one over there. The same is true for this side. This one over here is going to be connected through this one. Now, all of these, as they go in this direction, they all have different numbers. Do note that there is a very big break down here, so that this side is not connected to this side. Everything that is connected to one of these, along a row, is connected to each other. So A, B, C, D, and E are connected to each other. F, G, H, I, J are connected to each other, but not connected to A, B, C, D, and E. So if, gonna, so if I connect something here, and then something else over here, those two are connected, they are tied together. Current will go through whatever is connected in here, into there, through the back plate, and back up here. Uh, I used to have one of these disassembled somewhere out here for some reason. Oh, with the line that there was a Ah! So this one, same thing. Letters, buses, and then just general points. And if you can see, there are these clips. And if I can find something with which to push it out, the clip should do. Hopefully. There it goes. So this is what these look like on there. Tell me that worked. So these are just little clips, and when you probe something in there, when you poke something through one of these holes, it goes through. Come on, lighting. Probably that should do. It goes through one of these clips, and it clips on like that. Focus, focus, there you go. So basically it's just a, like a binder clip. And it has one, two, three, four, five, the same amount as one, two, three, four, five. So that is what makes the connection through all of these. And there you can see the inside, probably. I'm not the best cameraman around. Power supply. Uh, these things take AC, 110 or 220, and then they convert it into usable. We're going to be ignoring this over here because, if I recall correctly, the power supplies at Eastern do not have this. 
So we are going to be ignoring the green for now. We're going to act as it does not exist. Most power supplies will be controlled by voltage or current. You can limit the current or you can limit the voltage. Whichever constraint the unit is actually limiting will be displayed. If you have your current set too low, then it'll limit current, constant current. If you have your voltage set lower, then what the current would flow through the system, you will be constant voltage. And then this one has coarse and fine. If I want to turn it a lot, I use that. If I want to turn it just a little bit, I use that. Same for current. If I want to turn it a lot, I use that. If I want to turn it just a little bit, like fine adjustments, I use this. And then we ignore that. This is our positive, this is our negative. And that is our power, our go button. Now let me plug this in. Maybe I can. Hmm. How do I do this? Now it's the top readout is voltage, bottom readout is current. It is constant. It is current limited at the moment because I'm not allowing any current to flow through. So the voltage is going to drop to limit that current. If I allow more current, now the current is set much higher than what the voltage allows. Now it's limited at that voltage. If I use the, if I can reach over here and I use the fine adjustment, I can move it all that much. And it barely goes from 12.4 to, it goes 0 0.8 volts all the way. Whereas if I use this over here, the coarse figure, I can bring it from 12 volts all the way to zero. So. So let's try. Let's turn that off. It's probably not going to display very well. I don't think I have the resolution set terribly high on this uh, thing. So remember that we want to measure current. Therefore, we have to find on our meter. The meters in the lab are functionally very, very different. Uh, those are workbench power, uh, benchtop meters. This is a handheld one. This is going to be far, far more useful. This thing has been knocking around for ages. And as you can see, it has several inputs, just like the ones in the lab. One of those inputs is going to be a common. We can tell that this is a common because it goes from... There is a solid line drawn to each of these. Common. Now, this is going to be our output for our current. I'm just going to use that there. What are we trying to measure right now? We're trying to measure I measured. I measured. So, in order to measure current, remember, this is our circuit now. This is no longer E, this is now, let's go straight to the 6 volts. 6 volts. We want to measure current. Our current is going, is going this direction. I really want to use a different color, but I don't have that many markers. Uh, is this going to work? No, why would it?
our current is our current is going that direction. If we want to measure current, current has to flow through the device that we want to measure current with, right? So, how do we make this current go through this device? We break the circuit and we add our device. Now, all of this current has to go through the device. So, this one over here, it's the red lane. I don't know why I did that. So, our current goes from here goes from our red lead, which is our output of our power supply, it goes straight onto, let's just put this here somewhere. Hopefully you can see that. It goes to, wait, the way I drew it is, it goes to our meter. So our meter, that's going to be yellow. difficult to see. And then we are building our circuit, we're looking at our drawing. We start from a positive terminal over here, positive terminal, red all the way over to here, connects here to the yellow, and it connects to now I made a mistake here. What are we trying to measure? Are we trying to measure volts, ohms, hertz, or degrees Celsius? Or are we trying to measure current? Are we trying to measure amps, or are we trying to measure milliamps or microamps? We are trying to measure milliamps, because that is what our theory told us that we always should expect. Now there is another thing to note here. You may not be able to see it. It all depends on how good the GoPro is. That does say 600 milliamp max. If I exceed 600 milliamps to this device, it will blow a fuse. It says so right there. Fused. Ugh, come on. Fused 600 milliamp max. Focus. And then. From that. And then. Straight back to our power supply. So if we observe closely this mess, and I certainly do apologize for it, it starts from a positive current, starts from a positive terminal, current starts from a positive terminal, it goes all the way over to our ammeter, oops, connects to the yellow over here, yellow, yellow, it connects to our ammeter, now we're here, it passes through our ammeter, now we're on the green wire. And then that green wire connects all the way to a resistor. It passes through a resistor, and now we're in the black wire. And the black wire goes straight back to ground. So the only thing that's left is to turn it on and set the voltages. It's limited. And I'm trying to get to 6 volts, I think. So now I'm at 5.6. If I turn this too much, if I were to turn this 6.3, now I can turn this back and make sure that that says 6 volts. It's easier to do with a fine adjustment. So now that is saying 6 volts. Now over here, I can set this over to turn millivolts. I'm sorry, uh, milliamps. And what does it read? It reads DC 0 0.6 MA. 0 0.69, 609 rather. So we are reading. A 
and it is quite cold in here so as this unit warms up voltage is going to vary as this warms up this one is getting kind of warm and that current is going to just change in different ways so we're reading six points come on six point one two milliamps now let's say that I were to do 10 amps Ugh. 10 volts what does it read? 10.3 volts uh, 10.3 milliamps I don't know how well you can see that and it is currently auto ranging. If I were to tell it not to auto range, there I am in a range of, I think, 10 milliamps. If I go over to microamps, it's overloaded and it beeps at me because I'm overloading it. But if I tell it to auto range, it'll find the best setting that gives me the most significant figures. So I'm just going to write this down at 1033 milliamps. 10.33 milliamps. I missed the 3 there. 10.33 milliamps. That's what that is. And I can shut this off. Shut this off. And our standard devi our, sorry, our deviation for this equipment for this system is deviation equals 100 times measured minus theory divided by theory. In this case, we're looking at for 6 volts, 6 minus 6.12. Divided by six times one hundred. What is that equal? I don't know. Two percent. You can do the other one. I really don't care to find out. If you did the other one and you got three point three percent, you understand the theory. This one, if I recall correctly, was a two percent. Now for the rest of these. We do the same thing, we swap out that resistor with a 6.8K, and then we do the same thing with a 33K. So all of the equations that I did to compute my theory, and then if I wanted to, I would just go this, and plug this, swap this one out, put in a new one, plug it, plug it. And then run the same battery ethics tests on the 1K, the 6.8K, and the 33K. Then power. Power is an interesting one. Power is the amount of ability to do work that you have. So your power in this case is equal to, this P is equal to I times V. But if we recall, if we do not know the voltage, but we have for some reason know the current and the resistance, what is V equal to? V is equal to R times I. So this can also be P is equal to 
i times r times i, which this can also be rewritten as i squared r. Or if you happen to know the voltage and the resistance, let's leave that as i squared r. If you know the voltage and the resistance, but you don't know what the current is, it can be P is equal to. Now, you don't know the voltage, but you know, I'm sorry, you don't know your current, but you know what the voltage is, and you know what the resistance is. In this case, we are looking at I squared R. What is equal to I? I is equal to V over R. So we do V squared over R squared times R. We do V squared over R squared. Remember that, that I, this over here, is squared. So V over R, the entire thing is squared. These two cancel out. So we are left as b squared over r for our power calculation and the units of this are going to be somewhere in the order of you can have volts squared over ohms you can have amp squared ohms or you can have ampere volts or, more traditionally, volt amps. Either of these are going to be equal to a watt. And this is capital W. Now, a watt is relatively small in comparison to a horsepower. So for most applications, probably seen that on your energy bill a kilowatt it's a thousand watts now for a fun bit of trivia this power supply that I have here that just came unplugged is rated to between 0 volts to 30 volts and between 0 amps to 5 amps if I were to crank All of these all the way to the top how much power is it delivering you can go out and pause the video look at which one of these equi look at which one of these two of these three equations fits best the output or the information that you were given and if you know which one of these is and you do the thing correctly you can go ahead and pause now because I'm about to give the answer away that is 30 times 5 is equal to what? 150. So this is able to deliver 150 watts. Not continuously, and it will burn out. And since I just did that, I'm going to bring this all the way down. Because I don't want to shock myself. And... That should pretty much cover it. So, again, over here, we are given a current and we are given a resistance. Look at the circuit. A is asking for voltage. What is the voltage? Well, what is voltage? Voltage is current times resistance. That one is going to be I times R. So, if PR, the power dissipated by R. We know the current and we know the resistance. Which two, which one of these equations uses only current and resistance? So, the current squared times the resistance is equal to the power dissipated there. And do note that it does say milliwatts.
So for something like this, the voltage we're looking at eight K, which is eight thousand times point zero zero four three. Well, no, 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 no. Point zero zero one six for one point six milliamps. That is twelve point eight volts. Because we're doing hopefully you can see that. We're doing one point six times ten to the negative three amps times eight times 10 to the 3 ohms 10 to the 3 times 10 to the negative 3 cancel out so we are left with 1.6 times 8 is equal to 12.8 ampere ohms which is equal to a volt so 12.8 volts your units are an important part of your calculation do not leave them out. Now, the previous question has you answer for voltage. Even if you did not calculate voltage up here, you should be able to answer this in milliwatts. So, so for power dissipated by that resistor. What is the power dissipated by that resistor? Which one of these equations uses only information that you know? That one. It uses the current and it uses the resistance. So 1.6 times 10 to the negative 3 squared times 8 times 10 to the 3. So 1.6 times 10 to the negative 3 squared times uh, 8 times 10 to the 3. Now this is amps and this one over here is amps, uh, ohms. This is going to equal keep doing that one point six times ten to the negative three all of that squared times eight thousand is equal to zero point two zero four eight if we use engineering notation such as the that it calls for, we're looking in the terms of milliwatts. So this times 10 to the 3 is going to equal our answer. 2048, 2048 milliwatts. And that pretty much covers lab, lab 4.